Hey everyone, welcome to episode 21 of The Good, The Bad, The Spammy. I'm Rita, the content marketing manager here at Mixmax, and today I'm going to be critiquing a follow-up cold email that I received. So I think this is maybe the second or third one in a series. So yeah, so let's get right into it. So starting with the subject line, it says reconnecting with Mixmax. So to me, when I see stuff like reconnecting or following up or anything like that, it is so obvious that it's a cold email. So I would immediately trash this email. Obviously I didn't because I wanted to critique this email, but normally a prospect when they see something like that, automatically it flags to them that this is a cold email. So they're most likely not going to open it. And then when you go into the first line of the cold email, You see, I tried connecting with you a few months ago, but haven't heard back yet. I'm reaching out again because I still think their company name can be a great resource for Meeksmax and your content team. So when you look at the first two lines, those are ones that appear in my inbox as well, right? So they appear as the preview text. So combine that with a subject line and immediately I know, yeah, this is a cold email. They're trying to reach out to me again. So definitely don't make it super obvious that it's a sales email. And then when she says, you know, I tried connecting with you a few months ago, haven't heard back, you know, your prospects, they don't owe you anything. They don't owe you a response. So you're really just wasting your first lines when you write stuff like that. And not only that, there's nothing really valuable in this email for the prospect because it's all about the sender. So I tried connecting with you, but I haven't heard back. I'm reaching out again because I still think that we're great for your company. You know, we work with a large network of vetted writers to produce blogs, SEO content, other custom content. So for that part, you know, they had the right formatting where they use bullet points and they use bolded words, but it's the wrong focus because it's all about the sender. There's nothing valuable here for the prospect, right? And then after writing all that, the call to action is, are you available to connect sometime this week? So right away, you know, I've never shown interest. I've never responded to any of these emails. So no, there is no reason for me to try to connect or book a meeting, right? So try to ask for interest first, instead of trying to book a meeting. So I've gone ahead and and kind of revised this follow-up email, and this is the revised version. I lost it. Hold on. I will show you what it is. Here we go. Technical difficulties. All right, here we go. So this is the revised email. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So the subject line that I used is SEO stats. Okay. So to me as a content marketing manager, if I receive an email that says SEO stats or something intriguing like that, I will most likely open the email. And then I went right ahead and I said, you know, Rita, SCM Rush published this article with the top 106 SEO statistics. And then here are two that stuck out for me. Long tail keywords make up the vast majority of all Google searches. Less than 1% of searchers click on the second page of Google results. So this is something really interesting for a content marketer to look at. This is interesting information, something that maybe I might have not known about. So right off the bat, you're offering value to the prospect. You're giving them a reason to read your email because they're like, oh, cool, 106 SEO statistics. They read these two. They're like, oh, those are interesting. Maybe I want to read the rest. They'll click on the link and then you'll know that they're actually interested in SEO content. And then the call to action that I put instead of writing, do you want to book a meeting? I said, were you aware of these? Yes or no? So whether I say yes or no, you can have an automated email that goes out after that, according to my answer. And just like a fun fact here, the way I created this poll is you just go directly in an email with Mixmax, you hit the backslash and then you put poll and it gives you the option to write out your question with the options yes or no, and then you insert it directly in the email. So this is how I would transform it super short with a clear call to action that asks a yes or no question, which is very easy for the recipient to answer. And then, so I just wanted to, you know, give a summary of what I talked about and what I changed. So TLDR, don't use words like reconnecting or following up in the subject line because those make it very obvious that it's a sales email. Number two, don't only talk about yourself or your services in the email. Try to make it almost entirely about your prospect. 
Number three, do use bullets and bolded characters just like this email had done, but with the right focus. Number four, don't ask for a meeting if the prospect has never answered your emails or has never shown any interest, has never clicked anything. Don't ask for a meeting because more often than not, they're not interested in talking to you. They have no idea who you are. And number five, do ask a low friction yes or no question for the call to action. And if you have Mixmax, definitely use the poll feature because it makes it super, super easy for a prospect to answer. They just have to click. They don't have to hit reply. They don't have to write anything out just to click and they're done. And that's it. Thank you all for listening and see you next time. Bye.